Good evening, Guidance Star family and friends. Pastor Wayne Montgomery coming to you from the Guidance Star Missionary Baptist Church. We greet you this blessed day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've been blessed to be joined tonight by one of our own deacons, Deacon Larry Montgomery, as we uh, tonight will bring you the lesson uh, that will be brought from the book of Hosea, uh, dealing with God's uh, return to love and justice. You know, so many times in our lives we turn our backs on God, but God is so patient, so loving, so kind, and always forgiving to those who search Him with their whole hearts, their whole minds, and their whole spirits. Uh, as tonight we'll be joined by Deacon Montgomery. We first want to go in prayer uh, that God will bless us, that God will use us, that God will bless you and open up your avenues of your mind and your heart, uh, that he may speak to you and us as well as we deliver the word of God. So let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessed love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who thought it not robbery, uh, who gave his life to uh, on the cross of Calvary for those who uh, want the remission of their sins uh, to be washed in his blood for those who recognize that we can do nothing without Jesus Christ in our lives and that he may pay the ultimate sacrifice for us to have a relationship with you. We pray, Father God, for all those who say pray for me this night. We pray, God, that you would bless them, that you would keep them. Uh, if they bereave, we pray that you would comfort them. If there are sick we pray that you would heal them uh, if they're incarcerated we pray that you would free them uh, spiritually as well as physically if they are homeless god we pray that you would shelter them if they are hungry we pray that you would feed them most of all father god we pray that this night we will give you praise honor and glory uh, that we would do your due diligence to teach and preach your word uh, that this dark and dying world may come to know that you are a loving god and that through you all things are possible. And no matter where we've been in our lives, no matter what we've done, uh, the sin that has found its way into our lives, you love us more than our sins, you will forgive us, you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and you will make it right through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So God, we just thank you tonight, and we pray that you would be in our midst, knowing, oh Father God, that where two or three are gathered, you promise to be in the midst. So we thank you this night, O oh Father God. And as we pour out your word, uh, we pray that you would use us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. Amen. Again, we greet you tonight, uh, saints of God, as we uh, bring you again uh, this week the uh, Sunday School lesson entitled Return to Love and Justice. You know, so many things have went on in our uh, community, in our world, and uh, so many of our brothers and sisters have found themselves uh, hurting uh, and even asking the question why. We can think about the incident that happened uh, this past Monday in Minneapolis uh, as one of our dear brothers lost his life. Uh, we pray for that family. We pray that uh, God will heal that situation, not only him, but even in here on our, in our own city, uh, as we uh, still keep in mind the uh, loss of Brianna, uh, and uh, we keep in mind uh, Brother Aubrey, as we understand that these are senseless deaths. But you know, sometimes uh, things happen that we don't understand, that uh, we can't uh, see the outcome, but God knows, and God will bring about a bring about justice and bring bring about uh, healing. You know, when we think about uh, the Sunday school lesson tonight, uh, return to love and justice, uh, the children of Israel did so many things wrong in the eyes of God, and tonight we want to not harp on what they did wrong, but more uh, put more emphasis on how God loves us in spite of ourselves, how we turn our backs on God, yet God still patiently waits uh, for us to return to him. So as we delve into the lesson tonight, uh, we ask Brother Montgomery to introduce himself and just welcome him again uh, to our uh, Bible study tonight as he has agreed to uh, allow God to use him. You know, it's a blessing to be able to have uh, deacons to assist you uh, in uh, teaching the Word of God. You know, we have all, just because we're the pastor doesn't mean that we don't need help sometimes, doesn't mean we need a break sometime. And, you know, for myself, 
uh, I know sometimes I get mentally tired as well as physically tired and you just need a helping hand so my brother is here tonight to join us and help us out and he's a great teacher so I have no doubt that uh, between him and myself uh, you will be blessed in word. So we'll turn it over to Deacon Montgomery for a moment and let him introduce himself and what God has given him tonight and we'll delve into the lesson. Brother Montgomery. I'm uh, Deacon Larry Montgomery, your brother in Christ, coming to you this yes. evening, a blessed evening, an evening that God seen fit to let us bring a word, his word to you. And of course, as Pastor was saying, the lesson's coming from Hosea. Uh, and the one thing about this lesson that's, that's so amazing is that we see here in Hosea where Hosea is one of the one prophets that the Lord used in his prophecy as an instrument. It's, and I say that in the form of that the things he had Hosea to prophesy, Hosea lived them. Amen. We see that when in the relationship between him and Gomer, the prostitute. God commanded him to, to do that and he obeyed God. He became humble and did what God wanted him to do. But more so about this lesson, just like anything, to open up our minds, open up our hearts to receive it, the lesson put emphasis on the devotion of reading. And the devotion reading for this lesson comes out of Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, the 11th to the 20th verse. And I will read that to you. Starting at the 11th verse, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands his laws and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine homes and settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large, and your silver and your gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your hearts will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And he has led you through the vast and deathful wilderness and thirst and waterless land with his venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you out of hard rock, brought you water out of hard rocks. He gave you mammoth to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my powers and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gave you the ability to produce wealth and, to, and, and so confirm his covenant, which he swore to your, your ancestor as it is today. And reading that, just for a moment, I'd like to put an emphasis on how many times do we use the word I in the things that the Lord has blessed us to be able to do and not give the Lord credit for it. So many times people go to work. Well, I went to work all week. I went to work all week. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and uh, I visit people. But, but what was the purpose? What was your motive for visiting people? I did it. Do we ever put God, we need to put God in everything. Like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We should acknowledge the Lord in all our ways and who would he will direct our path. Amen. And that's what we need. Uh, Pastor? Absolutely. You know, when we become complacent, when we uh, look more to our own selfish desires, our own selfish needs, uh, as the lesson will point out tonight, God calls that vain glory. You know, everything that you and I have been blessed with, everything uh, God has showered us with, uh, we ought to give God honor in that. You know, the children of Israel had a, a, a great problem uh, with turning their backs on God and forgetting what God uh, had done for them in their lives. You know, when you think about all that God has blessed us with, how God uh, is patient when we are wrong, when we climb fool's hills, uh, you know, when we sin willfully, God is patiently waiting and yet 
God does not shut the windows of heaven up. He still allows his blessings to fall upon us. And, you know, Brother Montgomery, I'd have to say we probably don't get all the blessings that God has intended for us when we walk uh, clam foods here. But yet God does not uh, uh, shut total the windows of heaven. And even in this lesson, you know, God is patiently waiting for the children of Israel to turn back to him. And uh, mm -hmm. it says that God got so mad that God was ready uh, at the point that he wanted to destroy uh, the children mm. of Israel, but as God sit on the throne, as God is sovereign, as God is, uh, his ways are not our ways, and you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts, God sit on the throne, and he looked down to earth and had compassion, and he said, you know, my children are foolish, they they serve in idol gods, they believe in, they worship in Baal, and, you know, and, and they are giving uh, worship to Baal, uh, who can't not do anything for them, and, and giving what I've done to them, and associated with a uh, a foreign god and you know so many of god's people do that they look out over their neighbors and god says you know i brought you from that situation i brought you from over here i delivered you out of that and as soon as god delivers us out of that oftentimes we like misery we 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 love the sin that we uh, were captivated by it, and it draws us or it pulls us back to the very thing God delivered us from and that's what the lesson points out as the children of Israel God says you know remember I brought you out of Egypt and yet here they find themselves trying to get back to a place God had de delivered them from and you know as we look at the, the book of Hosea uh, like I was telling you before we started our broadcast here three things really jumped out at, at me as uh, we looked at uh, the life of the prophet Hosea uh, contrasted with the life of uh, the children of Israel and, you know those three things that uh, point jumped out at me I'll go with you uh, for just a brief moment uh, you know one thing I found out in my personal life that when God calls you to uh, ministry or God gives you a mission sometimes you don't understand that mission and you will find that that mission is very difficult sometimes the, the task seems unbearable but I promise you when you you keep your faith in God when you trust in uh, God's direction God will see you through you know when you think about Hosea God talked to Hosea and he said Hosea you know I, I need you to go marry this woman who uh, who is a prostitute mm -hmm. and, and you know I'm sure uh, Hosea said Man, Lord, you sure that's what you want me to do? You, you know what that woman's background is? You know where she's been? And you know you called me to be a prophet, a leading man of God, and you want me to go take somebody that the, the society looks down on, that society ridicules and so society sees as a nobody, and you want me to take her to be my wife? Uh, you know, Lord, I don't really understand it, but guess what? I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do. And, you know, uh, Hosea teaches us that sometimes we don't understand what God uh, has in store, what God's plans are. But just like Hosea, he was very faithful to what God had uh, called him to do. And he put God above his own selfish desires. He put God above uh, any thought of negativity that he had. And he says, guess what, God? Yes, I'll take this woman who's a... Uh, who's a harlot who who is a adulteress and, and i will take her uh to be mine it, that should tell us uh saints of god that when god calls us to a ministry or gives us a mission uh, uh it, it's parallels of certain things it can be both enjoyable but at the same time it could be sorrowful it can be beautiful but at the same time it can be heartbreaking and at the same time it's heartbreaking and beautiful it can be a blessing and a burden you know sometimes our uh, missions that god sends us on uh, seems like it sent he god sends us into a occupational uh hazard you know some of us work uh hazardous jobs you know uh, and, and we like we need that protection we may even say you know god give me the serenity uh, and you know the serenity prayer and god does keep us in uh harmful situations but when you look at hosea god had sent him into a a situation where it seemed like god set him up to fail where it just didn't really make sense. God, you know, it's a lot of women that, that you, you could have blessed me with. It's a lot of women that live in Israel, you know, and that don't have the background of Hosea, the one you called me to uh, marry. But nonetheless, God, in my heartbreak, 
and in my sorrow I'm going to find joy in my joy though I may share burdens guess what I'm gonna trust in you and I'm gonna let you uh, lead me guide me and direct me and, and saints of God what we must understand that when God blesses us when God takes us to where he is leading us we have to be willing to go no matter what our minds tell us no matter the how we see uh, the outcome whether we see the outcome or what God is truly doing in our lives we must be willing to uh, go where God is leading sometimes that leading leads to humiliation sometimes it leads to stress sometimes difficulties sometimes it leads to hazards yet if one allows God to lead them and direct them uh, and one remains standfast, Brother Montgomery, unmovable and unshakable, their reward is greater than the burden God has called them uh, mm. to bear. That's the blessing thing about God. You think about the children of Israel, man, God called them to bear it to the world, his blessings. Mm. God established the children of Israel to show to the rest of the world exactly how he loves us. Mm -hmm. And you know, you think about what God did to us. God set us up for prosperity. Yeah, and I, saints of God, then don't take that wrong way because I don't believe God is a God of prosperity. I don't believe that you can send me ten dollars an hour or send you a a prayer rug or a bag of beans and God is going to bless you manifold seven times over. I don't believe in that type of ministry, but I do believe that God is faithful. I do believe that God can open up the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. I understand that God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. But better yet, when we understand that, it's not that we understand God owns all of this. It's what we do with what God blesses us with, Brother Montgomery. And that's what the children of Israel had such a problem with. They always turned their backs on God. And I'll point out a couple more things, and then I'll turn it over to you. It says one uh, must realize that the pathway to victory is not always enjoyable. It may be difficult to see the outcome that God is leading you to. And you know, saints of God, you may be in a struggle right now. Uh, it may be because of the sin that's in your life. It may be because God has taken you to uh, your promised land or a place that God has called you into ministry, uh, whether that be preaching ministry, teaching ministry, whether it be to feed the homeless or uh, bring somebody in that is shelterless, whatever God has called you to. Even it may be uh, to love a, a unlovable spouse at home. It may be to hold on uh, to your change come in a way with child but when God gives you that ministry when God says this is your mandate when God says this is what I want you to do and you hear God you hear God's word and you let God speak to you just like uh, Smokey Northwood song he said you may not understand but God says when you don't just trust me mm -hmm. you know and that's how we got to be when we think about the children of God when you compare uh, Hosea's marriage to, to Gomer brother Montgomery uh, this woman was unfaithful. Uh, she was filled with deceit. The Bible says she was a harlot. And, and all of this calls to mind uh, how God spoke through Hosea to the children of Israel. God saw the children of Israel as a harlot. Uh, one that prostituted themselves. One who uh, looked at the gains of others and, and wanted what others had. And they were willing to give themselves away in order uh, to gain the per perishable uh, things uh, of the world. And, and because of sin, the Bible says that God had to uh, judge them. Gomer's unfaithfulness uh, to her vows parallel the unfaithfulness of the children of Israel when they broke their covenants uh, with God. Even when you look at the children uh, uh, of Hosea and the names that, that God mm -hmm. had given them, the firstborn son named Jezreel, who was a reminder of the atrocities that had occurred at Jezreel uh, when Jehu destroyed uh, the dynasty of King Ahab. You know, and sometimes God looks at us and he said, you know, you got this in your life. You think it's good for you, but I know it's not. Mm -hmm. And God, whether he sends enemies into our lives, whether God touches our lives himself, or God allows things to happen in our lives. God says, I have to remove that uh, uh, from your, your life. And anytime we as children of God has, has enemies, God will also destroy them. Just as he allowed Jehu uh, to destroy Jezebel. You know, Jezebel 
did not like God's prophet. She was the one who uh, wanted to kill uh, Isaiah. But Isaiah, God showed up and showed out. You know, he told the the. Uh, Isaiah speak to the prophets of Baal say you know build an altar and you call your God and you know your, their God didn't show up because he was what he was dead mm -hmm. you can't call on no dead God but so many of God's people call on dead gods they call on things that cannot help them in a time of trouble because only God can do that so Jezreel is a reminder of those atrocities uh, but his second child the daughter named Lo Harama meaning not loved you ever felt like that? Not love, man, it's a bad feeling. It, it, it's a bad feeling to know that person don't love me. What did I do to that person? What, why that person don't love me? And we go around second guessing who we are. We feel empty. We feel a void. But when we look at our own lives, sometimes it's things that we've done and caused grief in other people's life. And they say, guess what? I got to get rid of you. And, and then sometimes it's because we turn our backs on God as the children of Israel did. And, and we don't feel the love of God. Uh, and just like God, uh, the Hosea's third son, his name meant uh, God temporarily removed his love from the children of Israel. You know, that's a bad feeling when God temporarily mm -hmm. removes his love for them. So with that, I'll turn it over to you for a few minutes to let you uh, speak of what God gave you, and, and I'll pick it back and jump in as you need me to. All right, all right. Uh, you covered uh, the beginning. And one thing about this lesson is that we have an advantage because we're reading the story. It's being told to us. Can you imagine living in those days mm -hmm. and having to... <coughs> Excuse me. And see what Hosea went through. And if you was Hosea's neighbor, the thing that, and we got, and let's look at it like, the Lord wants us to see ourselves in this lesson. Mm -hmm. He wants us to put a mirror in so many ways and see us in this lesson. So if we had Hosea as a neighbor and we seen him marry a harlot, would we be quick to say something? We'll play against God's will mm -hmm. and you know there's so many people out here now today that are living in our society and we'll see them do things and then our response to them doing some things is like if you see somebody that feed the whole neighborhood have people that don't even know the people and give them a ride or something mm -hmm. but we'll be quick to judge and we might say something like they're crazy mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that but we don't know what command God has put in their heart and they're following that. God put a command in our, each and every one of our hearts, but do we be obedient to them? Mm -hmm. When we see that person at the Kroger begging for money and we got money in our pocket mm -hmm. and we're not going to go broke if we give them a couple of dollars, but do we handle this money ourselves? Give you a, a, a self-experience I had. Since Hosea is a living example of the lesson that God is teaching us now. God taught me a lesson, and I just talked about Kroger's. Mm -hmm. One Sunday morning, on the way to church, I stopped at Kroger to get some gas. Uh -huh. Dude come up, asked me for some money. I told him no. He asked, and he asked me specifically for a dollar, mm -hmm. and I told him no. And I had that and more in my pocket, but I, for some reason, I said no. I'm gonna show you how God works. When I got to church, and I was thinking about it as I was walking in, mm -hmm. when I got to the front steps of the church, there was a dollar laying on the steps. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, thank you, Lord. You, you showed me. Right. You're teaching me a lesson. Mm -hmm. and, and he's teaching us a lesson because in this lesson, in Hosea, which you brought up from the beginning of Hosea in the first chapter, but the lesson starts with the 11th chapter. Mm -hmm. In the 11th chapter of Hosea, depicts a divine and human relationship with God as a parent and as Israel as the child. Amen. When we Amen. understand that and, and each one of us have a relationship. If any of you have kids, and some of us not be, may not be a biological parent, but there's a lot of uncles, mm -hmm. aunties, brothers, and sisters that are, have the role of parent. Next door neighbors that have the roles of church members that take on the role of a parent. When that child, parent is absent, or when that parent is lacking 
and the kid is in need, somebody will step up and do that job. Exactly. And when you think of being, when you think of the Lord looking at us as his children, and you think about how we feel, now the Lord, he thinks much more. He, he, we can't even hold in us. I can't even, it's just coming to me so fast now. I can't even get it all out how much the Lord loves us. Exactly. One mm -hmm. thing I can say, he let, we here today, we got breath in our body. Mm -hmm. We see this virus is, I look, when I left the news today, it has took over 100,000 lives mm -hmm. in our country. But we're still here. We still got breath in our breath mm -hmm. right now to talk about the Lord, to say he, and give his word. And um, it says that the Lord, in this 11th verse, it says, 11th chapter, it says, the Lord had called his children out of Egypt. He called Egypt his son. Mm -hmm. Now we know in reference to son, when God says son, we know he's talking in reference to the one and only son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But here he's talking about son, but the son mm -hmm. means, let's don't get it twisted, but the son means not just one person in Israel, mm -hmm. he's talking about the whole oh, nation. Amen. He's talking about a whole unit. Mm -hmm. Just like when he talks about he's coming back for the church. He's coming back for the whole okay. church. He's not coming back for just this church or that church. The whole church, the universal church, right. he's coming back for. Mm -hmm. And we can shout glory, hallelujah about that. Mm -hmm. uh, when we think about how we treat our children, do we ever really understand how God is treating us? Mm -hmm. How he's giving us favor, how he's, and sometimes we might not want to say it, or, or we can't see it, but he's spoiling us. Mm -hmm. God is spoiling us on a daily basis. If you woke up this morning, and if you listen to me right now, I'll just you how I woke this mm -hmm. morning, and you got the activity of your limbs, that's a blessing. It is. There's somebody out there right now. No matter what situation you in, just about, I can almost guarantee you, it's somebody will trade places with you. Mm -hmm. Without hesitation. And then we walk around crying and complaining about what we're dealing with. And in reality, we should be giving more praise and thanks than we do complaints. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, and that's what, when you look at the, the book of Hosea, it, it, you see so many of God's judgments being sent out. Uh, mm -hmm. So many warnings. If you do not return to me, if your if your heart does not turn back to me, if you do not uh, turn back from me from turning your your back on me. But in all of those warnings, as you just said, God says, "Guess what, Israel, my son, I still am patiently waiting on you." Mm -hmm. You know, you think about saints of God as we look at our individual lives. Think about how many times we've messed up and God is still patiently waiting on us. You know, just as sure as God's judgments and uh, his uh, impending judgment uh, is a sure thing. But more than that, God's love and faithfulness is more sure than his judgment. God loves us in spite of ourselves, brother and mm. And because God loves us so much. Though God should give us, the Bible says we all sin and come short of the glory of God. You know, and, and James said it, we we are slip and we are or we are fall. And, and sometimes, you know, we we are sinners saved by uh, grace because God's love is, will always win out. Mm -hmm. You know, God may say, guess what, Brother Montgomery? Guess what, Pastor Montgomery? I got to punish y'all because you know what you did. Just like our parents talk to you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you ever heard your mama tell you, uh, you know, I love you so much I got to give you a whooping. As a kid, you didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, you understand that, that, that a parent loves uh, or uh, loves a, a child when they discipline mm -hmm. that child. God loves us so much. He can't leave us the way we was mm -hmm. and when we sin when we turn our backs on him uh when we prostitute the things of the the world you know when we replace god with the the things that we have gathered uh in our lives mm -hmm. things that god truly blessed us with but we don't recognize it then you know god says you're not living the way i want you to live 
You know, I blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else, but you, you know, you want to hoard it. You know, like you told that story about that, that dollar and you came up on the church steps and God says, see what I'd have done for you? Because, you know, it, it, it's funny, but I say, you know, what about if you came that you gave that dollar and you came up on the church step, it was a hundred dollar bill laying there. Mm. You'd be like, God is good. <laughs> I don't know if we had that same response because yeah. when God convicts us. You know, and I've been mm -hmm. in that situation sometimes yeah, myself. Yeah. When God convicts us, when God shows us that we are wrong, mm -hmm. his message is strong, but his love is even stronger. Mm -hmm. Because God says, guess what? You understand that you just messed up. Mm -hmm. I can tell by your sorrowful soul. Mm -hmm. I can tell that your heart is hurt. But guess what? More than me judging you, more than me punishing you, I'm going to show you my love. Mm -hmm. And that's what he, he, mm -hmm. Hosea is pointing out in this lesson as he deals with the, the children of Israel. Man, the imagery that he uses is so mm -hmm. powerful mm -hmm. because all of us should be able to see ourselves, mm -hmm. whether we are the harlot, his mm -hmm. wife, mm -hmm. or we the children of Israel, or we are the faithful few that says, God, no matter what, mm -hmm. I'm going to stand. But you know the sad irony of it is, even those who stand will get weak, will fall, mm -hmm. because unfortunately situations arrive in our uh, lives. And sometimes our burden, our blessings become our burdens. Mm -hmm. You know, we pray. And sometimes God says, guess what? I'll give you exactly what you asked for. Mm -hmm. God knows it's not good for us. God knows we don't need it. Mm -hmm. And God didn't intend for us to have it. You know, when God took the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, God says, I'm going to take you off. I'm going to establish you as the nation, as my children. Mm -hmm. And I want you to show the rest of the world how good I am. I want you to introduce me, the great I am, to the rest of the world. And I want you to show them how good I am. As God marched them out of Egypt and they was praising God and thanking God for what God had did. God delivering them. God got them into the the, the wilderness and just as soon as they had a little grumble in their belly they started to complain and what you say they asked for as the Deuteronomy picked out God rained down manna from on high mm -hmm. that's how good God is go ahead I will say when you said the word image we look at all in this lesson look at the imagery that God gives us to show himself to show us in an earthly way better how to understand things. Mm -hmm. This lesson also points out, we see that he's comparing himself with a parent. Mm -hmm. It also shows us where he's making a comparison of himself with a former. Yes. And the children of Israel are the beast, the burden uh, are, the, are the beast of the, uh, a burden. Mm -hmm. So when we think on them terms, when you think about, can you imagine a former out in the field and he's got his cause of rope and stuff on the, on the beast, guiding him through a daily task. Mm -hmm. He knows that without those cause, the restraint, he had no, he, he had no restraint on him. They would go wild and they would go off. But the Lord wants us to look at like the cause of love that he uses on us. Mm -hmm. And the restraint, not a, a harsh cord, but a cord that's spiritually of love, gentleness. And kindness. Mm -hmm. And he knows sometimes that the stress and the burdens of this life, sometimes he has to reach down and take that yoke off of us. Because we'll walk around in this life with burdens on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, sometimes we just get stubborn for whatever reason, or we think that there comes this I again. I got to do it. Mm -hmm. I got to figure my way out. Yeah. When God is there for counsel for us. It talks about in this lesson too, it points out that. If the Israelites had a took counsel from God, mm -hmm. they would have been a lot better off. But they sought counsel from the ones that had put them in the bondage. Exactly. And you know, the crazy thing is, and I'll let you pick up your point, is that the more God called them, yeah. the farther they ran. Yeah. You know, it, it's crazy. I, it remembers when we was children. You know, at certain times of the night, you better been in front of the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was more like when the street lights went bing. Right. You know, you better been in uh, in, in Mama's call mm -hmm. when when she yelled out that front door and said it's time to 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 come home. You know, 
oftentimes we like, shh, y'all be quiet. We didn't hear. We're going to act like we didn't hear. Yeah. Then that voice gets a little louder. And then that voice gets to the point where you know, uh oh, I done messed up. <laughs> I better get home. Yeah. yeah. And God, as you pointed out, gives direction. And in that direction, God cares for them. Uh, and he patiently waits for them. And God shows them tender, loving care. Mm -hmm. And even though they experience pain and injury, it says God would pick them up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that our children, it, when they were learning to ride a bicycle mm -hmm. or learning to skate, mm -hmm. and they'd be going down the sidewalk and they'd fall and they'd get up and they start crying and whimpering. And they say, oh, I scraped my knee. Mm -hmm. And you say, let me kiss it, let me blow on it. You know, that's how God does us. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about it. Yeah, it's like we got a, a my little nephew, great nephew. He's, he's, he's walking real good now. And at first, he would come to everybody. Mm -hmm. Now he'll come to you, but just for a moment. Then he's gone. Can't keep, can't keep still. He just, people in the family know who I'm talking mm -hmm. about. But he'll just move, move yes. fast, like a little jet. But that's the way, like you said, the, the, we are to the law. You know, like, with this virus going on now, we all been put on pause. Mm -hmm. And just as soon as they, like, open the gate a little bit, we can see around the nation how people act like nothing's going on. Exactly. And that's the way it is with, with the Lord. When we know the Lord, know of the Lord, we know of the Lord, but we need to know the Lord. Exactly. So many people, everybody out here just about can say God. Mm -hmm. But they don't know God. They don't have, they don't have an intimate, personal relationship with mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes. And we that do have one with them, it's our job to live a way to where that we draw people to want to have a relationship mm -hmm. with him. Would you want to have a relationship with God if the people that said they was in tight with God had a foul mouth, mm. did worldly things? Worldliness is a magnet. It draws us away from God. And if we don't watch ourselves, we don't be careful, the things that in this world, they are attracted to us. And be honest with you, they're good to us, but not good for us. Amen. And you know, it, it's funny you point that out because the, the Bible teaches us not to be a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, it, I've had conversations with people that are very, very close to me. And, and I tell them, there's like, uh, you know, cousins that uh, at one point in my time I hung out with, we went to the bars, we went to the clubs, mm -hmm. you know, we did everything. Oh. Yeah, we chased girls. But it was a point in my life that I had to give those things up. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and sometimes when we have family gatherings, they be like, hey, cuz, you want to uh, go over here? i like, no, I can't do that no more. And they be <laughs> like, oh, we know who you are. Ain't yeah. nobody going to say nothing. Yeah. And I have to think to myself, uh, you may not say something, mm -hmm. but the person that I see that I run into that may be trying to change their life, mm -hmm. who may exactly. be trying to... Uh, turn things around uh, that person who's trying to be delivered out of their sins out of their situations out of their burdens they see me in the club shaking it up and they be like oh shoot well, i ain't no use to me changing you know and that's how the children of israel look mm -hmm. they looked at their enemies and they thought their enemies uh, lives were simpler uh, more enjoyable. Uh, they were having more fun. They seen the abundance that uh, the land of Egypt had. Mm -hmm. And they were short memory or short lived where Israel, uh, Egypt had, had them in bondage. And now the Bible, uh, or Hosea points out, you trading with them. You know, yeah. you, you getting their, your oil from them and, mm -hmm. and you bringing your goods into them. Uh, you relying on them for uh, what God has already blessed you with. You, 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 you making, you forming a relationship with somebody God doesn't want you to form a relationship with. And, you know, and, and so many times we do that in our own lives. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the Bible tells us we're not to judge one another. The mm -hmm. only way we are to judge is uh, uh, spiritually to see if that fruit is of God. Mm -hmm. But 
when we judge a, a, a person and we say, you know, they ain't good enough for me, that, that's the wrong kind of judgment. But when you look at what Israel was doing, they looked at their enemies. Uh, they looked at Assyria and they looked at Egypt and they formed this pact with them. They began to worship Baal and, and they began to serve Baal and they turned uh, uh, away from God. But, you know, they can't blame their rebellion on God because God had never stopped uh, loving them. Mm -hmm. God, uh, his agreement, that, that covenant that God had made with Abraham uh, and that it went on through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, and that that promise is still being fulfilled in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even uh, today. They can't blame their, their rebellion on God because God was the same as we say today, uh, yesterday, today, and, and forevermore. God, as long as God, they did what God wanted them to, God will ensure their prosperity. God will ensure their blessings. God will ensure their health. You know, if we turn our lives over to, to uh, God in that manner, if we turn God, uh, our families over to, to God in that manner, we could walk away knowing that everything's going to be okay. That doesn't mean we won't have a, a problem. That, may, that doesn't mean something may not strike our families. That doesn't mean one of our children uh, may not go wayward. Mm -hmm. But what that is saying is that God will keep our households mm -hmm. uh, intact. As I was reading the lesson, a word jumped out, and uh, it, the Lord was speaking. I think it's in verse pertaining to, in verse five, talking about they backslided. Yeah, and we 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 use the word. We think about the word backslide now, of course, as just getting away from the church. But in essence, backsliding is when we don't live the way God wants us to live. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we think about backsliding. Like I said, we think about people not coming to church. But what if you come to church and you leave church, you're not living the way God wants you to live? Mm -hmm. Could we consider that a form of backsliding? We certainly could. You know, because uh, if, I, if I sit in here and sing the song, give praises, and then when I walk outside here, I'm going to turn my nose up at a man that's homeless, mm -hmm. that's backsliding. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, we have to be careful because there's so many things, so many, I and mean, a lot of times I look at life like we're in a war, and most wars you have to realize if you're in combat, they got minefields in certain places. But the minefield in this spiritual war we're working in could be drugs, mm -hmm. could be uh, overeating, could be dealing, uh, committing adultery, mm -hmm. uh, we have problems going on in our home, domestic violence. And you know, we surrender to these things when we don't have spiritual strength. Amen. We need spiritual strength to overcome the man feels that are set out here to, to make us turn away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful. Uh, and when people backslide, before you backslide, you have to realize, I'm realizing that there's a great possibility that one time people that backslide had a closer walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Israel had a closer walk with the Lord at one time. Yes, at I many times, because we can see through the history of Israel how many times they, they fell back. I wonder if that's where the word backslide came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they because they kept having mistake after mistake after mistake. And I can't sit here and say that we're not doing the same mm -hmm. thing. As a human race. Amen. And sometimes as individuals, we find ourselves having setbacks, mm -hmm. backsliding. You know, we'll start coming to church for a while, and then we'll just drift off. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody see you no more, whatever. And, and, and we have to be careful of those things. Because when we backslide, we come susceptible to the devil. Mm -hmm. The powers of... The, fall, the war is not against each other. It's against the powers of Christmas kind of evil. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we can be our own worst enemies because it seems like a lot of times the Israelites, they had desires to worry about. They wanted to make their own God. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, 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 to worship not the true loving God. But whenever you make a God, you're going to make him the way you want. Exactly. So if you've got an idol God, a false God, 
Them Sundays that you don't feel like getting up, mm -hmm. that false guy said, oh, you can lay here. You worked all week. You make them fit your needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the true and loving God will make you realize, what if, what if I did for you? What if you doing for me right. in return? Because it's not at all, you know, it's just like reading the word of the Lord. It's just like, when I say this lesson is a mirror, it's just like, we talk about kids. We talk about family relationship. How would you feel if all day long, your kids was walk past you, didn't say nothing. Got up in the morning, didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. God feels the same. When we get up in the day, in the morning, say, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the day. Don't they, do we get up saying that? I know most of us Christians, we yeah. should do it. Yeah. How many times do we sit at the table and eat and, and forget to say our blessing, throw that food in our mouth first? Exactly. We, we get caught up with the, the emotions of, of life. And not really understanding who controlled uh, those emotions, who can, who showered us with those uh, uh, blessings. You know, while you were talking, I was thinking about, uh, you know, how Hosea pointed out that the, the children were of Israel uh, were like birds searching for food in between uh, two cities. And, and you know, when I look at uh, us as a people, and when I say us, I'm not talking about a specific color, mm -hmm. but a, a, as a people, the Bible says that sometimes individuals backslide or, or turn from him. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, as the lesson pointed out in last week's uh, Sunday school lesson, that sometimes leaders turn their back on God, mm -hmm. and when those leaders turn their back on God, uh, the people tend to follow, and, and then a whole nation a whole community, uh, or in some instance, a whole country has turned their backs on, on God. And that's where the children of Israel found themselves at. You know, it's, it's amazing to me to understand or to, to know God's grace and then say it's not good enough for my life. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard for me to understand how... I know my life has been so blessed. How God has given me more than I thought I would ever have. How God uh, allowed somebody who grew up in a single parent home mm -hmm. uh, to be a father. Mm -hmm. And not just a, a father, but I consider myself a good father, not because of my own uh, uh, abilities, but because of what God allowed me to go through you know so many of us use the excuse of you know i didn't grow up with a father in, in the house and we turn to the ways of the world uh or we turn to the dark side uh, uh of life mm -hmm. uh, and we go through life using uh our childhood as an excuse as to who we are as adults mm -hmm. and you know when you think about god says i called israel in its infancy before they were even a nation before they truly knew themselves god looked at them as those those children who who he had blessed but yet turned their their backs on him they still using the excuse uh, oh god i know what you did for us in the in the wilderness and i know you gave us a uh, manna from ohio i know you allowed moses to draw water for a rock i understand when we got to our red sea you ported it you know we, we have in the back of our minds everything that god has blessed us with mm -hmm. uh everything that god has done for us how he delivered us out of uh situations how he protected us in other situations and, and we understand this and we know this and yet we we reject the love of god we reject his grace we reject his uh his mercy by the way we live by the way we treat uh others and, and you know because the bible says how can you love me who you've never seen and, and then you you say you you hate your brother that just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and, and you know when you think about the the the, the children of uh israel and, and you look at how uh Chapter 12 picks up, uh, as Hosea points out, how Jacob's life compared to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know how God says, you know, Jacob, you was a man of deceit. You, you, you was a man of self-reliance. You didn't trust me. And it was evident as you grabbed your brother's heel as you was coming out of, uh, he was coming out of your, your mother's room. You know, you were selfish before you even knew what the, what the world had to offer. And so many of us turn our hearts 
uh, uh, to that way. We, we want what somebody else has and we'll take it by any means. And then when God blesses us with something, instead of us being a blessing to somebody else, we, we hoard it. We keep it to ourselves. And sometimes we get so prideful uh, uh, that we, you know, we strut around like a peacock uh, and look at me. But God says, woe is me, you know, and, and even as a... a Solomon pointed out, vanity, vanity, woe is me. You know, when we, we, we have to take inventory of our lives, as Hosea is pointing out, when we backslide, when we turn our backs on God, we better take inventory before it's too late. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you pointed out, only those who know God can actually backslide. Mm -hmm. it, it, the world doesn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a sinner uh, and you have not given your life to to God through Christ Jesus, our Savior, you're not backsliding because the only way to have uh, to to backslide or to turn your back on someone is to have a relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have a relationship with that person, the only way uh, to break that relationship is, is to take advantage of their blessings. You know, how, how many people you ever met in your life uh, that you, you thought they was your close friends and, and they took advantage of your kindness? You know, if you're a person mm -hmm. like me, I would do anything for anybody. But there's certain things I don't like. I don't like to be uh, 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 taken advantage of, and I'm right. certainly not going to allow you to take advantage mm -hmm. of me. And, and I don't like to be belittled. You can't think you're smarter than me. Even though you may be a rocket scientist, mm -hmm. I don't want you to think you're smarter than me. <laughs> I may say you're more intelligent than me. Mm -hmm. I can admit that, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make one better than someone else. Right. But that's how the world looks at it. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. I got this on my own. I got a PhD. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Mm -hmm. So and so. I'm Dr. This, Dr. That. I'm the one who did this. And you know, and they turn their, their backs on God because before they got to where they are, that God that they was praying to, the sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. they said, Lord, if you do this for me, I promise I'll do this. Lord, if you bless me uh, with this, I'll go back and serve my community. Lord, if you bless mm -hmm. me with that big old house, I'll let somebody stay. But soon as God does all of that for them in their lives, they turn their backs on God. Not everybody, right, right. but the majority, as they see in the, in the life of Israel. But where the Israelites was acting, that's enough to make the Lord be get angry. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I'm gonna step back just a minute and just, just touch on. If you think about the Lord being mad and the, as the Lord contemplate the judgment of Israel, His sympathy moved Him to have a compassion and stop short of totally annihilating the people, mm -hmm. like like a uh, Amad and. Zimbel, mm -hmm. two cities in the vicinities of Solomon and Gomorrah that suffered the same fate. But God didn't want that to happen to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. You know, he could and they just, they yeah. deserved it. Yeah. But that's just like us. A lot of times we don't want to punish our kids and we might let them slide. Mm -hmm. But we can't do that all the time. Yeah. Because God is a just God. God knows how to, his anger and his compassion can come together. And he can, he can balance it out. We as human beings, a lot of times, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm thinking about, uh, if we think about some of the things that happen to other people, and we shake our heads and say, I don't think I could deal with that. Mm -hmm. And in reality, when we say that one word, I can't, we probably can't. But those people have come to the point where I feel with, with faith and understanding, they are letting God lead and guide them. There's a lot of things in this life that we don't want to have to face, but with God we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's funny, if you, this is not a point of the lesson, but it's something worthy uh, of pointing out. It, it says that the, the children of Israel call God the most high. Yeah. They recognize who he was. Mm-hmm. They understood who he was, yet they turned their back on him. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, God says we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. uh, God says in order for us to, uh, to love him, we must love one another. Mm -hmm. You know, in this you show the love of, of Christ. 
you know, as Israel, uh, as Hosea draws comparison uh, in the lesson to the life of Jacob, the father of the nation uh, of Israel, Jacob's greed, self-reliance, and deceitful character was evident. Yet more than that, God's love was evident. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say uh, Jacob wrestled with an angel. Some people say it was God himself, uh, and Jacob prevailed. And somebody would say, well, wait a minute. How can you wrestle with God and prevail? Mm -hmm. If God is all powerful, if God is all knowing, you, you can't beat God. But what we must understand is when you use the terminology that, that Jacob prevailed, after Jacob wrestled with God, after he prevailed, after he understood that it was God he was wrestling with, Jacob looked at his life and repented. He looked at his life and he seen all the wrong mm -hmm. in his life. He bowed down in the humble submission. He asked God for favor. And when God saw Jacob understand that all of my blessings come from the Lord, God did not withhold his blessing because Jacob had been deceitful, that because Jacob had been self-reliant, but God blessed him and he found favor with God. And because of that, here we are today, we can still look at the children of Israel, uh, though they have been splitted, though they have been scattered. Mm -hmm. God says, I'll bring them all back at, at, at one point in time. Mm -hmm. But God's covenant agreement is what I want us to understand, that God's promises are everlasting, that God's promises are faithful. If God brought you to it, saints of God, he will certainly get you through it. If God says, follow me. Be willing to go because where God is taking you, I promise you, it's your rainbow on the other side, Brother Montgomery. Mm -hmm. We could talk about this all night. Yes, sir, we could. Uh, we was in, uh, he was talking about God will call you back. That, that comes up in Hosea. Uh, when we get down to the 10th and 11th verses of the 11th chapter, it said, Hosea used the image of a lion and a dove in the opposite light. The Lord, like a lion, roars, will someday call his exiled people home, and they will, like swift birds, return to their land. Mm -hmm. Though the Lord, as a lion, roars against Israel in judgment, he also roars for the purpose of calling for protection and blessings. Joel, Joel, Joel 3 and 16 reads, mm -hmm. The Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people and a stronghold for the people of Israel. Could we imagine the heavens? Do you know when the heavens and the earth start trembling? Mm -hmm. It's, it's trouble for those who don't know the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know, but for those who do know the Lord, yeah, it's protection. Yeah, it's protection. Prote he said he's coming back in the twinkling of an eye. You better get ready. Sir. Yeah, and, and there's like a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. And if a thief is out there listening now, you don't, you know how you how you act. If you don't have yourself together, you better get together. Amen. You with know, some quickness. With some quickness, you know, as Jacob's life points out to us. His spiritual growth took place as he wrestled with God. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes our lives are, are just like that. You know, God tells us we must come to him with a contrite heart, with humbleness. We must humble ourselves before an almighty God, you know, in humble submission. It wasn't until Jacob acknowledged his frailty and his dependence on God that he and began to beg God and plead with God for his divine favor mm -hmm. that he was truly blessed. And just as Jacob had come to his senses uh, and recognized his dependence on God, God called the children of Israel uh, to do the same. Israel was to repent, which meant return back to God. Mm -hmm. As God would, and in their return, they were to reestablish the justice in their society. 
uh, and depend, which means uh, they were to wait on on the Lord. Oftentimes in our lives and even in our society today, uh, the scales of justice seem uh, to be unbalanced. The mm -hmm. scales of, of justice seem to tip always in someone else's favor uh, and never tip in our favor. Sometimes it's uh, uh, one person, sometimes it's a group, and sometimes it's a nation uh, uh, exploiting or defaulting uh, others for their own gain. But what uh, we need you to understand, saints of God, when we uh, see this, God understands where we are, God sees where we are, and, and God will lift us up out of that situation. And for those who uh, do not understand that, that God judges and God is a rightful judge, uh, you and I may be able to fool one another, Brother Montgomery, but mm -hmm. we can never fool God. The Bible says God knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. He don't care about uh, uh, what somebody else sees. He knows our hearts. He knows our insides. The Bible says he knows us better than we know ourselves. Because one thing you and I can't do, we can't number the hair on our head, but God can. Mm-hmm. Because God knows everything about, uh, about us. And the reason why God knows everything about us is, one, he created us. One, he breathed in us the breath of life. Mm -hmm. One, he formed us in his image and in his likeness. Mm -hmm. But more than that, God, even in our wrongness, loves us. And because he loves us, he says, guess what? I'm going to bend over. I'm going to pick you up. You pointed out that God calls like a roaring lion. You know, it's me and you in the jungle, and we hear a lion, yeah, yeah. what we going to do? We're going to run. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to become afraid, uh, uh, frightful. Yeah. But when you hear God's voice, mm -hmm. it said the children of Israel will run back to God. Mm -hmm. That's how you and I must do. In our wrongness, when we've been deceitful, when we're not showing justice, when we're not giving God's love, when we're not displaying God's character in our lives, when we're not letting our light shine, mm -hmm. we're not willing to give our testimony, when we stop, uh, uh, we hoard the blessings of God, mm -hmm. and, and, and we have this, as you said earlier, uh, our attitude or this me attitude, and all we can think about is ourselves. God is saying, one day, you're going to hear my voice. Well, you know, in this 12th chapter, the prophet Hosea is focusing on the nation's so social injustice mm -hmm. and form alliance with other nations. Israel's wicked behavior will lead them to nowhere. God judges people and nations according to their deeds. And when we think about nations, we look at the nation of this United States of America right now mm -hmm. and under the leadership that we're under right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't speak well of our nation, mm -hmm. but there's still hope. Amen. Because even in Israel doing all their misdeeds, God still gives them hope. Mm -hmm. And he gives us hope. Yeah. You know, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at well, Ephraim, another name for Israel, feeds on the winds means that Israel put his confidence in the emptiness of the winds, hoping to get help from uh, other nations when God opposed them. Now what I got out of that, and I said, winds, wind. Well, they were talking about this east wind. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to find out that the east wind is a destructive wind. Amen. And, and this east wind is the wind that Moses called on when they divided the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. This each wind is the same wind that brought in the locusts when they put the flag, put the plague mm -hmm. on Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So this east wind, and they was feeding in, in, in our minds, we have to understand, they was being drawn to something that was going to end up being nothing for them. Mm -hmm. But that's how we can be sometimes, because we can see things, that's just like in our days and times now. We got a, young, a lot of the young people out here and some of the old ones, but mostly young people at a certain age, you want to live that fast life. Mm -hmm. You want to be that bling bling life. Mm -hmm. You want to look like if you got a stack of money, you got a nice car, and you got this and that, and you're the clothes, and you know, this on top of the world. Mm -hmm. But you're chasing the wind. Chasing the wind, yeah. Comes fast, it goes fast. Mm -hmm. You got it dishonest, dog eat dog world. Mm -hmm. You can lose it dishonest. Yes. So, 
in this society we live in, we have to pray for our society. Mm -hmm. Because we as individuals, we have to set an example as an individual. Because it's just like voting. It's every vote count. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this society that lives a godly life is a help mm -hmm. to the ones that, that, that are lost, that are in the dark. So we have to find ourselves striving to be in the will of what God would have us to do. Amen. Not our will, but God's his will, will. His will be done. And the only way we're going to know that will is by reading his word. And this whole lesson kind of boils down to God's will for us and the reading is going to work for us. Mm -hmm. Now the reading is going to work for us, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we look to the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and you know, as we wrap up for tonight, uh, you pointed out uh, earlier that, that God destroyed the towns that epitomized Israel's sins. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilead and Gagil. God tore down their altars and, and uh, those false gods uh, that they worship uh, and points to God rescuing Israel by his grace from captivity. You know, when we look at our, when we contrast our lives uh, with the lives of Israel, God uh, destroys the sin that's in our lives. Mm -hmm. If you are his child, if you're a born again believer, God will destroy the sin that's in your life because mm -hmm. uh, God can allow sin to stay uh, in the place where holiness dwells. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know that as children of God, uh, Jesus says, I went to the cross, uh, but I leave for you uh, the comfort the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The power of the Holy Spirit dwells richly uh, in the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. And since the Holy Spirit dwells in our lives, since the Holy Spirit uh, is sealing us and sanctifying us until the day of redemption, since the, the Holy Spirit empowers us uh, to live for God and uh, to, to show forth to the world the, the love of God, that grace that God rescued us with, God requires us. He doesn't ask us. Mm -hmm. He requires us uh, to give that same grace uh, to show so, to someone else. He requires us to show mercy uh, to those who despitefully uh, use us. You know, when we think about all that Jesus went through uh, with his enemies, Jesus uh, could have destroyed his enemies. Mm -hmm. He could have talked about them. He could have ridiculed them. He could have made them look foolish. But he didn't waste his time doing any of those things because his ultimate goal was to destroy the things that are wicked on the cross. Mm -hmm. The things of this world, whether they be in a person or, or in a group or in a, a nation, uh, God will uh, destroy it because God says, I am God. Mm. And, and, and you will know that I am who I said I am. God can't leave the world the, the way it is. But one thing we all can understand and should come to know as we come to a close that God's restoration power is remarkable. Mm -hmm. We don't understand God's restoring, restoration power. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about who we used to be as people. Oh, amen. And, and, and <laughs> truth be told, who we are at some point yeah, even now yeah, in our lives. Yeah. And, and we stop and we think about it for a moment. And we look back over our lives and, and, and we say, man, God has brought me such a, a, a mighty long way. God mm -hmm. delivered me from this situation. God brought me through uh, this situation. Mm -hmm. God blessed me with this good job. You know, God blessed you to uh, retire, mm -hmm. you know, and, and prayerfully at one point, some point in the future, God will uh, bless me with that same blessing to mm -hmm. retire. Uh, but until then, God's going to give me grace and, and strength to uh, to keep on running this race. And, you know, e even uh, as God has called me to to pastor now, I try to use what God has done for me in my life to help somebody else that mm -hmm. God has called me uh, to guide. Because you've heard me say one thing I'm not afraid of is to share my testimony. Mm -hmm. I know where God brought me from. Mm -hmm. I know where God did what God delivered me uh, uh, through. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you won't talk about me is for me to talk about myself. Yeah, and guess what? God's been too good to me, saints of God, for me to worry about what you say uh, mm -hmm. that I used to be. Because guess what? God done delivered me from that. We're blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to, to, to be a, a blessing. 
God's restoration power reveals through Israel God's great love toward his people. Saints of God, God loves you. God will forgive you. God will keep you. God will hold you. God will wipe tears from your eyes. God will be your burden bearer. God will be your healer. God will be your uh, bridge over troubled water. God will be to you whatever you need him to be. But you must turn back to him. You must be willing to give yourself away, as the song says, and let God be the God of your life. As we close tonight, we pray that uh, you have enjoyed uh, this Bible study. We pray that something has been said to uh, strengthen you. We pray uh, that if you're not a child of God, you have heard and uh, the word of God and it has encouraged you to, to trust in him, to uh, give God your hand and uh, give Jesus your heart and let him come in that he may save you from uh, a life of sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and most of all that he will uh, remove you from your future uh, in hell and bless you with a home in glory. We pray that God keeps you. We pray that God blesses you. And we pray uh, that as we say every week at the end of our broadcast, we pray when the doors reopen at the Guidance Star Missionary Baptist Church, if you don't have a church home or uh, if you uh, have broken away from the church, we pray that uh, you will join us. We're a small church, but we're a church who... Uh, understand that God gave us and we live in God's grace and God's mercy and we just thank him for his goodness we thank him for uh, his son and our savior Jesus Christ and we thank him for allowing us to come to you and bring you a word from the Lord remember God loves justice he hates sin but he loves the sinner saints of God that's you and I we pray uh, God's blessings God peace and God's prosperity uh, upon you. We'll see you on Sunday as we'll bring you a word from the Lord. We pray uh, that God will keep you. We'll ask uh, Deacon Montgomery to close us out in a short prayer. And uh, we pray that you will pray for us as we will continue to keep each and every one of you in our prayers. Brother Montgomery. Our Father which art in heaven, Jesus Christ's name by the aid of the Holy Spirit, once again you have allowed us to partake in study of your word and the feeding of your word will give us spiritual strength. We pray for all those who have heard the word tonight and all those who are just overcome with you, Lord, to be mm -hmm. able to do what your will would have you to do in their lives. And let us be a blessing Please, to each other. Father, and Lord, let us just say, and we can't say it enough to you, but thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Good night, saints of God.